I might have been a little bit too excited about web starts yesterday, and today I've built my first website on the platform, and I want to go over all of the issues that I had. Now, I still like this a lot, I recommend it, but there are definitely some quirks, and if you're an experienced web designer, which I'm not, you know, this is perfect for me, but if you're experienced, then you're going to find this platform probably not to be up to par. So let's get into it, and yes, that does sound like a negative introduction. Believe it or not, I actually enjoyed this experience. I'm going to show you the site that we built. In fact, before we get into the designer, this is the site that we built right here. So this is the finished site. You know, is it the best? Probably not. You know, I'm not the best web designer, but this was the site originally. This was a WordPress site that I built with a theme a couple of years ago. So there were a few problems on our WordPress site and it needed a refresh. So here is the web start site. And if I scroll down, what you'll see is we have this nice little animation effect. <laughs> I don't know if that's really, you know, it's kind of cheesy. We also have some buttons with some animations. Looks like I missed it there. Uh, but we have, you know, some basic animations on our buttons as far as the hover colors. And then down here we have the gallery with uh, the different colors and the shadow effect and all of that. You know, I don't know if I really like these colors might be a little too aggressive. Uh, this was my color palette choice, you know, a couple of years ago. Whenever I was, this was like actually one of, this was like the second or third site I ever built. What I love is this newsletter right here. You know, it's integrated into the platform. Now, does it look the best? No, it doesn't. But I don't want to waste too much time going over that. I just want to show you what I've done today. And by the way, this site here is fully functional. So you can now come to the events and what you'll see is we're on the web start subdomain because I haven't, you know, mapped it over yet, but we can come to the events page. And here we'll see, you know, a nice little events. This is our spread simple widget. This is the main page that people come on on the site anyways. So uh, I need to probably fix some spacing there. It doesn't look quite, you know, up to par. But that's one of the problems that I had today with web starts. The about page, I think it looks decent enough. Again, some spacing issues. The contact page, best part of it. You know, this took like five minutes, <laughs> not, not much time at all. And then the blog, there's no blogs, but uh, eventually she's gonna write some blog articles. She always says it, so I put it on the site. This web start site, they have the margins here and these margins, I can't figure out how to adjust. So I can use my pictures in and out of the margin. So like I could drag this over here, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna make sure that I'm within the margins so that you know I follow all the rules for uh, the different mobile devices. And this is gonna bring me to the problem at hand with web starts. So the entire time when I was designing this, everything was coming in hidden, and then I would have to come in and create a mobile version of it. Now that takes you a little bit longer and it's not the end of the world, but it was very frustrating nonetheless. So like here, looks like our spacing's a little bit off. It's like we're doing so much drag and drop, which actually makes it very easy, but it also makes it easy to make a mistake. And I think that's worth pointing out because as I designed today, I constantly was making these mistakes. And even now I look at it and you know, it's just not that great. Now I spent about three hours doing this. I wanna highlight the biggest issue with web starts from where I stand right now. And that is with this title. Notice if I highlight this, what we'll see is heading large. So if you're brand new to web design or any of that, then you probably don't notice or particularly care the fact that heading large, heading medium, heading small, and then we've got some pixels. You think it's just for stylistic purposes, right? But this isn't an H1 tag. Let me repeat that. This is not an H1 tag. So on this site here, if we come back to the home page, and this is our web start site, and if I come in and inspect this element, what we'll see here is it looks like it's just basic normal text. Like I don't see an H1 there. It's actually an H4. There it is. This is an H4. And on our main site, what we'll see is this area right here is an H1 right there. We are an eclectic art gallery. That's an H1 tag. So I'm no SEO expert, but when I build sites, I do the one H1 tag on each page, you know, then I use H2 tags and then H3 and H4 based on just how I'm feeling, like these right here. So like this would be an H2 tag. And on this, I couldn't do that. And I spent at least 30 minutes trying to figure out how. And in fact, I actually found, and we're gonna get to this problem here 
You know, this still isn't working. Uh, but here, this is an article, or I guess I should say it's like an SEO guide that Web Starts wrote. So this is meant to be a solution that, you know, they're teaching you so that you can do better SEO. And what we'll see here is that they recommend the title tags, the keyword in the title tag. They recommend H1 tag, H2, and H3 tags. So why then doesn't the builder have that? So this doesn't seem to have H1, H2, and H3 tags. It starts with H4. Very bizarre, but it's not all bad. If we come into the blog and we click new post, we can type in test and then we can highlight the text and then we'll see our H1 tag. So we can make that an H1 tag, an H2 tag, all of that. So inside the blog, it appears to work. So if you're writing blogs to rank for SEO purposes, you shouldn't really have a problem, but inside the actual builder, this is like a problem the way I see it. And in the case of Seascape Designs, you know, this client, they're fantastic at what they do. They don't do anything with computers. They didn't have a website for the longest time. And the website has produced significant returns because of the event page. Most people come onto these events and in my opinion, this newsletter, when we had it up and running last year before everything happened, the newsletter was doing fantastic. And then we stopped sending the newsletters and all of that. So I'm gonna put them on this platform because the newsletter can come back, the events you know, drive a lot of revenue, and all in all, this is gonna be a great solution. But when I'm talking about other business sites that I'm gonna build, this might be a severe problem with the H1s, H2s, H3s, especially if you're building, you know, client sites for people that actually know or people that audit or do SEO audits on your sites and things of that nature. Uh, I personally encounter a lot of business sites that are like Seascape Designs, in which case I don't need to do all of that fancy stuff. So Web Starts is still going to be a fantastic solution for me. But that is a real problem. I mean, at least if you're out there looking at this as a solution. Now let's also get into one of the more frustrating things. And that's the fact that my designer platform is still not set up on my subdomain. If I log into Web Starts and I come up here to my designer platform and I'm getting more familiar with this, then I can come in here and I can go to settings and on my settings, like I have the domain set up. That's pretty much the only step that they said to do. So either the help documentation is, you know, wrong or bad. Like here's the help documentation and it says setting up your designer platform. Here on the help documentation, set up the site management link. You click the settings tab at the top of your designer platform. You click the settings tab at the top of your designer platform. Click edit on the pencil document. So we click edit on the pencil document. Enter the subdomain you would like to use in the left hand field. Manage will be used as recommended by default. That's what I did. Choose the domain name you would like to use, rocketstripe.net. Click update button to save your new client login link. These changes can take a little time to fully propagate so the link may not work instantly. But it's been a day, two days. But I sent them a support email and it was Friday at four o'clock one day ago that they sent a response. And this is just a generic response directing me to the help guide and the YouTube and all of that. And the way that I see it is like, if you say on your little thing that it's gonna take 15 minutes, and then at that point it had taken a day. So now we're looking at two days. It's taken two days for this to propagate and it's still not propagated. So normally it says up to 48 hours and I've never once encountered even close to 48 hours. And in this case, it seems like it's something's broken or wrong. Now, before I get out of here, I want to show you a negative review in the AppSumo store. And it's sounding like I'm trashing web starts. And believe it or not, I bought the two codes. I'm keeping them. I'm going to build real websites on this. But here it says, I really wanted this deal to be good, but... And then they list out a lot. I mean, if you pause this, you can read the review or head over to appsumo.com. This was written two days ago. The line spacing tool has a bug. I encountered a few bugs inside the builder today, most notably with the actual text, like the text uh, sizing. The text sizing has a very clear bug. It is ridiculously frustrating. The preview was off from web preview to mobile. This is also a major problem. So every time you got to go back and forth and then you mess up on mobile and you have to actually check it on your mobile device. And then they say essentially the customer support is not so great. They use H4 to H6 as heading styles. Where are H1 to H3? That seems like the biggest problem. All of these points are 100% valid. And they bought 160 deals. 
They wanted to like it. You know, they may actually be a web expert. They said that they were patronizing and all of these things. And I know I'm sounding like I'm ragging on them today. And I was very, very positive on them yesterday. You know, in my overview video, maybe I made things look a little too easy. Now I still built this in a couple of hours, you know, probably three hours total. Coming over from WordPress, I already had pretty much everything I needed and it wasn't really a bad experience. So if you have your client files organized, if you have everything, I'm still gonna be making a ton of videos on this because I'm gonna be using it. We're gonna build rocketstripe.net. We're gonna do a lot of great things, but there are some frustrating pain points and I'm gonna highlight them every step along the way. Cause I'm not trying to sell this to you if you don't need this, or if you think that you're gonna buy this and make a bunch of money. Now, technically you can, because it's $118 and you know, websites, you can make significantly more than that. However, there are definitely some quirks and it kind of depends on who you're going to be selling this to, who your intended audience is, what they need, things along those lines. So hopefully this video has brought you some value. My name is Scott with AIProfits.com. Sorry for the, I feel like a slightly aggressive tone today, but like this video if it did bring you some value. Subscribe if you want to see more content like it and we'll see you in the next one.